Good morning, it is Sunday the 20th of October. I am just getting ready to leave the house to do the second in the Around the WSL Ground series. I don't know if I'm breaking the rules, but I'm on the way to Crawley uh, to see Brighton and Hove Albion women take on Bristol City women and in the Conti Cup. So it's not technically a WSL game, but it is a WSL stadium. I set the rules, I think it's good. Um, yeah, the journey is going to take about two, between two and two and a half hours door to door, which is actually pretty much the same as it did for me to get to Arsenal, which is um, kind of even like half, maybe half the distance. Um, but yeah, ready to go and hopefully ready for a great day of football. The sun is shining. Um, I hope it stays that way. Uh, let's go to Crawley. Okay, so I've only got maybe one mile that train that I've had maybe one mile away from my house and I'm already questioning if I've got enough layers on. It's actually really cold and I'm already ill so I hope that there is heat from as you know the number of people that are gonna be at this game. Um there's a lot of ticket picking up that's gonna be going on so when I get to London Bridge I'm picking the tickets up to Crawley. And actually something to note so I got the tickets for the game on Friday, I ordered them online and the only option I had was uh, to get them sent by post. There wasn't like a printing option um, or just a have on your phone option, um, which I think is a bit weird anyway because I thought that was just a standard option now, especially for sustainability um, in terms of people not having to post you anything. Um, but I, so I got them, I knew obviously they wouldn't arrive in time, so I called um, the, there was a number in the email to call. I called them yesterday. They were super, super friendly, really nice. And they said, um, yeah, you just pick your tickets up when you get there. Yours haven't actually even been dispatched. Um, just go when you're there, tell them the situation and pick them up. So just a note for anybody, you can order online um, really close to the event and just ignore that posting and pick them up when you get there. Okay, so we're about eight minutes away from arriving at um, Crawley Station um, and just wanted to kind of give some thoughts on the game and the teams. Um, so Brighton and Bristol are actually having very similar seasons so far. Um, they are ninth and 10th respectively in the WSL. Both got two points each. Brighton are just higher uh, on goal difference. I think they've got one more goal. I'm rocking because of the train. Um, but they're both kind of in the, yeah, in the relegation fight at the minute. They actually played each other um, at Bristol's ground, which is called, I'm actually going to have to look for it, Ashton Gate, um, in the first week of the WSL, and it was a, it was a nil nil draw. Um, and I think Sophie Bagley saved a penalty for Bristol. Brighton were the better team, though. They looked more like scoring. Um, and also in the Cup, uh, the Conti Cup, I know, has only been one game, but they're both sitting in the same position. Um, in the table, same goal difference, they're in Group B. Um, so I think it's going to be a tight game, but what's different about this is there are no draws allowed um, in the Conti Cup. Um, just a note on points. Uh, I hope I get this right. Three points for a win outright. Two points for a win from a penalty shootout because that's what happens we can't have a draw one point for a loss from a penalty shootout uh, zero points from a loss from open play um, so I'm expecting a tight game but I'm actually expecting last uh, the last game I was at was Arsenal Brighton um, it was good but Arsenal just completely outclassed Brighton and I didn't really get a chance to see what Brighton can do so I'm hoping this will be a closer game and we'll actually get to see uh, both teams kind of display some quality both in attack and defence there we go. Um, nearly there, and then I think we'll look to either walk or take the bus from there. Oh, 
should also say, yeah, teams are out. I've seen the Bristol team, but I haven't seen the Brighton team. Um, I can't seem to find it anywhere. So, Bristol team's out, I should say. And also, Man United are currently beating City 1-0. Uh, and they've just started their second half, so I'm keeping an eye on that game as well. Here, um, Crawley Stadium, station, Crawley Station here. Very pleasant journey so far. Uh, platform 12 from London Bridge. The train that's kind of going to Gatwick, so there should be a lot of suitcases. Um, we had a few rolling suitcases, but yeah, really nice. Uh, and I'm just going to meet my friend who's coming in from Brighton so he can actually maybe tell us how the travel was from Brighton because I looked it up and I think it's 21 miles between the Amex Stadium where the men play their games and um, the People's Pension Stadium that we're going to so it's about a 25 minute drive but I think it's over an hour journey um, so I can see how that might be difficult actually for some fans to kind of get here but we'll ask him what his trip was like when we find him so we have decided to walk, we're going to walk the 25 minutes from the station. If you want to take the bus, it is just cross the road straight over. So cross here, go straight across. It's bus stop A, um, it is the fast track 10, the bus is called, and it takes six minutes to get there. Um, the stop says Broadfield Stadium, which is what the stadium is also known as, and I think the buses run um, four or five times an hour so you'll yeah pretty safe bet that you'll get one so just straight across the road you get the bus hey <laughs> uh, I and, can't wait to get to people's pension <laughs> <laughs> and like I said Ali came in from Brighton what was your route here Brighton station to three bridges brief stop up there and a fantastic burger van, incredible value. I got two hash browns <laughs> and this cup of tea for £2.70. I did not um, get thoroughly, that in London. I thoroughly recommend the, uh, the stop-off burger van at Three Bridges <laughs> Station. Uh, lovely service with a smile as well. And then um, the train? And then, and then Three Bridges to Crawley. How long was your journey in total? Um, about an hour. Okay, so yeah, as I estimated, if you're coming from Brighton, probably about an hour as well which is a bit crazy when you're coming to support your hometown team yeah nonetheless a great value day out so far so yeah tickets incredibly cheap train fare incredibly cheap tickets for four pounds each i think maybe with the booking fee but max five pounds each and um yeah my train was 12 pounds return i do have a rail card but even without that's 15 pounds return your train was seven pound 35 okay so we're talking £10 for the whole day, unless you want to be luxurious and get the hash browns and the coffee like this guy. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to do the walk and uh, pick up the tickets there. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, this is the end of Brighton Road. It's just a straight road down. We're coming to a roundabout, which I've read on every single bit of directions. Wait till we get to a roundabout. We're at the roundabout and then we're just going to turn right and the stadium, oh, or maybe we go under this because look at this football on there. Is that a sign? What do you reckon, under this or? I reckon under the bridge. Okay. Well, no, we should consult Google Maps oh, first, really, look, shouldn't we? There's a big football in the middle of oh, the... Oh, well, there we go. Oh, That's we've got two sides. Sign. Okay, we're going up and turning right. Made a mistake, we think it is under the bridge, so now we're doing this big hill. Well, I say big, it's not massive. Oh, yeah, I would have rolled down that if it was not so muddy. Okay, under the bridge. Yes, this looks the right way. Here we go. Here is the stadium. We're approaching People's Pension Stadium. So I think it seats uh, about 6,000, a little over 6,000. And it was built in 1997. But Brighton have only been using it since... Um, 2018 since the start of last season so we're going to try and find where to pick up these tickets and um, there's parking here as I understand all the parking is free and it's first come first served and there are quite a few there's a few spaces left oh gosh um, so I imagine driving here is definitely feasible as well um, Okay, home away. Let's follow home and see if we can pick these tickets up. Town team together, Crawley Town FC. 
also known as the Red Devils. Uh, I reckon this is the Bristol City team bus. We can see the pitch through there. Um, oh, reception. I reckon that's where we go. Oh, must be. West Stand. So what I've heard in terms of accessibility is that seats are East Stand and West Stand. But um, accessibility wise, if you are in a wheelchair, then you will be located in the West Stand. Okay, here we go. Tickets, club shop. Cool. In, picked up the tickets really easily. Um, we've got a program each, two pounds, and a fixture list. And now here's the teams warming up. There's Hope Powell over there. And we're going to try and find a toilet. Oh, Frankfurt. Oh, that sounds cool. Okay, uh, review of the toilets, positive. Um, Very what? positive. Mm. One thing I will say about the women's toilets that I'd actually not considered before, but that I saw something on Twitter today and then I realised. So they have, which is awesome, really, really cool. A lot of football clubs are doing it. The box with sanitary towels and sanitary products for women. And then they don't have a sanitary bin in the toilet, which is really weird. So, um, yeah, they need both, I guess, but really good on the initiative of having them there. We are sat in, I can't even tell you if it's the east or west, but um, yeah, we sat middle of the pitch. I'll give you a view of the pitch. It's a good atmosphere here, lots of um, just music going. I'd estimate maybe like, how many people do you think are here, 300? Oh, a bit more than 300. Okay, I need that because I'm a bad estimator. Um, and I have to say, a majority are men, which is also really good to see. We're about 10 minutes in and Bristol City are 1-0 up. I think it was actually their first shot on target. It was Harrison um, from the corner of the area, just kind of dragged it um, across the keeper, bottom corner of the net. Really good goal. Um, but yeah, other than that, I would say Brighton have kind of been a bit more dominant um, and have had more shots on, kind of more shots on target. But um, yeah, Bristol leading here, um, 10 minutes in. But I reckon there's a lot more goals in, in this one.
We're about 35 minutes in now. Brighton are pushing for an equaliser. That was the closest they've came. Um, went round the keeper, but last ditch challenge saved them. And then the shot after that went over the bar. But I think there may be an equaliser coming, hopefully before half time, to make it even more interesting. Oh, nicely nipped in there. I'm a big fan of this left back. Go on, Simon. Oh. Okay, so it's 2-0 Bristol City at half-time. Um, goals from Harrison and Simon. To be honest, it hasn't actually been run away from Bristol City. It's been a lot more evenly matched than the um, scoreline suggests. But Brighton just haven't took their chances. Where Bristol City are fallible is at the back. They've been playing around at the back too much. They've given Brighton... Um, a few chances that way, but they just Brighton just haven't capitalised. I think it's a long way back. I do think Brighton can do it, but they'll have to come out of the blocks pretty quickly in the start of the second half. Um, let's see what Hope Powell can get them doing um, when they come back out on the pitch in 15 minutes. About five minutes into the first half, um, we have switched sides. So I think we're on the west side now. Um, Brighton have made one change. They've brought um, Eileen Whelan on for Daniel Bowman. And um, to be fair, Brighton have come out of the blocks um, really quickly the second half. Um, they're really pushing for a goal. So I think it's going to be quite an exciting, exciting half. Bristol just went close to getting the third. Gemma Evans, uh, the left back, who we really like the look of, don't we? Yeah, I've been impressed by her. She just went past maybe four players, put the ball in the box, um, and they got a shot off. Um, the goalkeeper scrambled a bit, but managed to kind of get on top of it. But if that had gone through, I think that would have been game over. So, um, yeah, they need to keep keep her under control, otherwise Evans might be creating a few more chances for Bristol. Brian are back in it. They've just converted a penalty. Kaylee Green, uh, the keeper got Bagley got a hand to it, but it went ended up going under her. Um, I think it was a pretty light penalty, to be honest. I think Bristol um, are fair enough to be a bit aggrieved with that. Um, I'm not sure I would have given the penalty, but even so, 2-1, Brighton back in it. Um, and everything to play for here. We might end up going to penalties after all. Got about 15 minutes to go now. Um, Brighton are really playing like a team possessed, kind of determined to get that um, equalising goal. And Bristol are starting to kind of flag a little bit, a few breakdowns in communication, um, a few little mix-ups. Um, so I think it's going to be a nervy 15 minutes for them. On another note, we are trying the hot chocolate. Have you tried it yet? Yes, it's, um, it's a bit, hot chocolate. bit watery. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not great. Mm. Babe's trough water. Oh gosh, it was too hot. Yeah, a bit watery. We need a bit more milk in there, I think. Um, but good, because it's cold. So good to have a hot drink. I think it's last throw of the dice for Brighton here. They've swapped Legaric for Umatong. Um, let's see if she can kind of be the, sorry, just watching, uh, the magic weapon and, and get them a second goal. Um, so that is the end of the trip to People's Pension Stadium. I'm just leaving now. Uh, Bristol City got the 2-1 win. Um, I want to say it was unfortunate for Brighton because um, they didn't take their chances and things didn't go their way. But actually, you know what? They got that penalty when I don't think it necessarily was a penalty. So I think this is more or less a 
a fair result. Um, I think Brighton really gave it the roll at the end, but Bristol City really dug in. Um, and in terms of Premier League, I reckon Bristol have maybe just got a little bit more about them. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, in terms of the day as a whole, um, yeah, really good day. Probably the most chilled football game I've ever been to. Um, I think it's, there was 442 people there. It was a good atmosphere. I think there were maybe three or four Bristol uh, City supporters. Um, but yeah, really good day, really good family day. There was something, a family area there, but I didn't get to properly have a look at it. I think by the time we got there, they'd finished up there, but um, I would definitely recommend uh, coming out here. Staff very friendly, atmosphere good. Um, hot dog good, hot chocolate not so good. Um, that would be my only improvement tip. Um, yeah, so that rounds up episode two of the Around the WSL Stadium vlogs. Um, I'll see you at the third one.